talk to us about your journey about how you got here to USC Aiken. Uh, well, I, I'm originally from this area. I went uh, went to Evans High School, and uh, uh, it's kind of kind of strange, I guess. I don't know. I got into college coaching. I coached a year at Middle Georgia Junior College. And then I was a volunteer assistant for three seasons at Vanderbilt University in Nashville. And then, um, you know, Coach Thomas called years ago, I guess it was in 2004, about an opening he had here. I knew they had just built a new stadium. And uh, that was about all I knew about the program. I came down and visited during that spring we had on an off day. And he offered me a position. I came and, uh, and you know, it was a good move for – for, for me to get back to the area. Uh, you know, it was close to home. My parents still live around, and I have a, one of my brothers still in the area as well. So that's kind of how it happened. I, you know, I was familiar with the program as a, when I was a kid. My dad, who was my high school coach, used to come over here and work camps uh, at, at the old field. And so I was familiar with the program back in the mid 80s, and then, you know, never really saw much about it after that other than. Um, you know, keeping up here and there from the local newspapers. But that's kind of how I found out about uh, getting, or I guess that was my journey to get here, I guess. And you started here, you said about 2004, 2005? Yeah. And you were here for a few years? Before. I was here for eight, eight seasons. I was here from the 2005 season through the 2012 season. I left and went to the University of North Georgia for, for five and a half years and then uh, I was offered to, uh, luckily, to, to come back. Uh, I guess it was the January of 2018, and uh, you know it was a good move uh, for for various reasons. And and uh, you know it was just kind of weird how how the world turns. But I'm very fortunate to be back. That's for sure. How strange was it going against USC Aiken for a couple of years? That was very difficult. I ain't gonna lie, that's very difficult. Sean Miller, one of our assistants is here now, was a kid that I helped recruit here. Um, and I never coached him. So like the 2012 season, after the season was over and I left, and, and I was coaching against Aiken in 2013 and 14, 15, um, all those years, that was difficult with a lot of those players that, that uh, I had coached here for several years and guys that I had recruited. Uh, that was that was tough. I'm not gonna lie, and they were really good, and uh, we weren't at that time. So, uh, but they, uh, you know, always kept a good relationship with those guys, and and you know, tried to kind of keep in touch with them over the years. And you know, fortunately, that was a uh, you know still a a good relationship there, and I can still relate and talk to those guys even to this day. So that's good. And, you know, coming back, what, I mean, you had to deal with COVID last season in the short season, so how difficult was that for you and the staff with the team? Uh, well, when I originally came back, I came back in the middle of the year, which was January of 18. And although I knew some of the players, I had been gone long enough that I didn't know a lot of them personally. And so the first, I mean, the first little bit that I was back, it was, it was me learning names and just learning who they were. I had coached against them and had prepared – to, to play against them, so I knew names and uh, or a little bit of the last name maybe and 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 you know tendencies of the of the player. But you know that first that whole first season, the 2018 season was was not an easy deal because you know it was kind of on the fly. But um, then we had a full season in 19, and and then last year with 20, we we're kind of starting to hit our stride. I felt, and then all of a sudden this bam, we were shut down. But um, you know, that was, that's been tough. Uh, but, you know, from a player's and a coach's standpoint, I mean, you know, I think we spent a lot of time trying to worry about what's going to happen when none of it's in our control. And I think people just need to go to work and do their job and let the powers that be or the deciding people tell us what to do and then we'll do it. We'll adjust. I think people get very upset, understandably at times, with the unknown, but... What am I going to do to control the coronavirus? What What is, you know, I'm not going to control the decision the NCAA makes. I'm not going to control the decision that the Peach Belt makes. You know, I'm just going to do my job and, and try to do the best that I can at it and 
let the chips fall where they may. Um, you know, so what are you looking forward to the most this season? I think this year, uh, this is an interesting group. These guys, uh, I, I think they're they're uh, you know very very scrappy. I think they're very uh, much more seem to be in tune with each other uh, on the field. Uh, you know, so I feel like we have a really really good sense of understanding uh, for tendencies for the other person. Um, defensively, um, there's a chance to be a, just a tremendous team. Um, which is huge for a pitching staff, especially a young pitching staff um, that can that can help help that young pitching staff out. Offensively, I think there's some guys that have a, a lot of potential, and the biggest thing is the consistency. Uh, and I, one day we'll have we'll have just a tremendous practice or a tremendous uh, inner squad from from some guys offensively, and the next day it's like the movie Fifty First Dates. It's like it never happened, and we're starting all over again. And it's, so the consistency and, and trying to build upon what we're doing every day and the adjustments we're making is 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 what we're really trying to shoot for right now. So let's take a back a second. How did you ever get involved in the coaching? My dad was my high school coach. Uh, he was a high school co baseball football coach uh, at Evans High over in Augusta. And then when Greenbrier High School was built, he started the football and baseball programs there and was the AD for three or four years and then retired and then he actually got back in. So he's uh, in the Georgia Baseball Coaches Association, Association Hall of Fame and the Georgia Athletic Coaches Association Hall of Fame and, and he, he did it for a long time. It was, I have two older brothers who both are coaches uh, as well. Uh, actually, my oldest brother was, was my position coach at Georgia Southern where I played. And uh, anyway, now he's a, a head football coach. So, uh, but we've always been involved with it. Um, you know, I, I, a friend, a good friend of mine who actually just recently passed, uh, got uh, he was a high school teammate of mine. He was coaching at Middle Georgia. He's the one that got me into coaching. Uh, when he called and said, "Hey, you know, we we would like for you to come down here and coach. We can't pay you anything, but we can give you a dorm room to live in." And I thought, "Wow, what a great deal!" <laughs> and uh, uh, so I went down there and coached, and I fell in love with the recruiting, recruiting part of, of the college part. Uh, luckily, my Georgia Southern ties kind of parlayed that into the vo a volunteer position at uh, Vanderbilt. And then that was a tremendous experience for those three years I was there, and that parlayed that into uh, full, my first full-time job here at, at USC Aiken. And, um, you know, and 20 years later, it's still, still going. So, When did you get started with baseball? Uh, I don't know. I was young. I was really young. I guess first team I was on, I was a, a t-ball team of some sort. I was four or five, and you know, I just remember I had older brothers, and we played, you know, in the backyard. So I understood the game or enough of it, you know, much more so than most four-year-olds and five-year-olds. And and then I was always at my dad's field, hanging out. So I watched people play, and you know, looked up to those older guys, and that was the beginnings that I remember were, were just always being at the field with my dad and, and with my older brothers in the, in the yard or watching them play, you know. So I was really young, three or four, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I've just never, ever known anything different. I've never had, I mean, it's just always been that way. If we weren't at the field or at a game or at a practice, we were watching the Braves on TV or, or we were working on my dad's field or we were in the yard doing something or, or even talking about it. I remember riding to school in high school with my dad who was, you know, I rode to school with him and we would listen to hitting tapes on George Brett from the Kansas City Royals, like tapes, you know, cassette tapes and like, you know, coaching philosophy tapes from Gary Ward, the old coach at, at Oklahoma State and like, I mean, that was big deal at our house, you know, we would get those for Christmas and stuff, you know, and my dad, that's what he wanted. But, uh, I mean, that's just the way it was at my house, you know. Different now from, from my household with my wife and my daughter. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of baseball going on with her. You know? But uh, they, they give me a hard time sometimes because the TV always tends to migrate to baseball. But uh, this week it's golf for the Masters. So, so you, you kind of were put on a journey to become a coach before you even realized. Yeah, I was just going to do the high school route. You know, when I was when I was playing as a player at at Georgia Southern, I was 
gearing to become a, a high school baseball coach, and you know, typically that guy's going to coach football as well. Uh, it makes you a little bit more marketable, I guess, if you can coach multiple sports at a high school level. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely what I was going to do. I just didn't know I was going to do it at the collegiate level, uh, especially you know when I first started at the collegiate level. I didn't, I didn't realize it was going to be this long because I made you know, $150 a month, and I lived in a dorm room for, for a year. And then, you know, a volunteer assistant in the SEC was a great, great opportunity to see those stadiums and to see how to, how to run a program and how, how a program should operate uh, and, the, and the caliber of player that, that you're teaching uh, as a coach there at that level was, was tremendous. But, again, it's a volunteer position. <laughs> that means you don't make any money. So at some point, you know, uh, you got to start making a little bit of money and, and being able to, you know, do, to provide to some extent, you know. Now, uh, you knew going into coaching, you're not going to get rich. But, uh, but yeah, it was definitely heading in that direction. That's for sure. So, what kept you around college athletics? The players, the the players, the players, and the recruiting aspect of it. Like the, you know, the players and the relationships you create create with the players. I mean, to me, I'm a teacher. I'm not a coach. Uh, and I'm teaching the game, I'm teaching mindset, I'm teaching strategy, um, and, and teaching technique, which you earn respect from those players when they start to understand you can help them. And uh, not just, you know, with their, with their swing or how they're throwing a baseball or, you know, how they're running the bases, you know, help them with, with you know, their social life or help them with their family life. Uh, um, help them academically, and when you earn that respect, you start to develop a close relationship. And, and those players, uh, you know, heck, I don't talk to them, you know, all the time. But guys that you, you earn that respect from, those are guys that, that reach out, you know, once a week or once a month to check to see how things are going here. And um, you know, those are special. And then when their kids are born, they're one of the first ones. Hey, I want my son to play for you. You know, and I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, you know uh, that that's the recruiting aspect of it too is you know seeing a player and you know you're gonna be wrong sometimes in recruiting, uh, not always gonna be right. But being able to have a crystal ball in front of you when this kid's a junior or senior in high school, and then being able to predict what he's gonna be when he's a sophomore, or junior in college, or maybe even a freshman, but. Um, and seeing if you're right, you know, that's, that's, that's neat to be able to take this, say, all right, I think this kid has a chance to be at this level in two years. And, you know, sometimes you're wrong, but I think the better ones, the better coaches are right more than they're wrong. Yeah. What do you love about baseball? Uh, you know, I was having this discussion yesterday during the rain with our, with our players in the dugout, with our position players. And, you know, uh, I'm teaching them about shoe care teaching them about how to take care of their glove when it gets wet, how to take care of the catcher's gear when it's, when it's muddy. Uh, you know, we're talking about the on deck man versus the guy in the hole and what responsibilities and, and, you know, picking up signs at a certain time, going over signs. I mean, everything to do with baseball and the intricacies of it, like those are things that, that a that a math teacher here on campus or a psychology teacher is breaking down certain things of their subject and going over small little bitty details and to me it's no different and my dad was a defensive coordinator for, for football and he was a baseball coach so he kind of had the defensive coordinator mentality with baseball so the mindset that he created with us ultimately led to a lot of success for our high school program and then I go to college, and Jack Stallings was my was our head coach at Georgia Southern, and he was a teacher of the game. He taught you how to get a lead from first, how to return standing, how to return diving, how to lay out for a ball properly, how to slide properly. I mean, everything was taught, and it was told, this is how you do it, and you don't do it like this because this, and then it made a lot of sense. So you take the mindset my dad had, you take the educational part of it that Coach Stallings had, and you – kind of blend those two and, and I think it becomes a beautiful thing you know no different than than a, a psychology or math teacher is fired up about their own subject uh, they could probably care less about baseball 
but that baseball into that and me being able to teach that part of it, that fires me up. So I think it's kind of the same deal as a math teacher. What, uh, what do you see for your future? What's next for you? Well, uh, hopefully uh, once Coach Thomas retires, I'll get a shot to take over here. Um, you know, I've had some of those discussions preliminarily, or I guess that's the right word. Uh, and, uh, you know, from that end, uh, you know, I'd like to build a program that's on a consistent national level uh, here that, that, that Coach Thomas has, has, I guess, done over the years and then try to, try to raise the bar a little bit and see if we can't, you know, uh, try, to, try to continue to grow the program. You know, uh, I think there's some exciting things going on here at USC Aiken with, with athletics in particular. And if we, you know, can continue that path, I think it's only going to help baseball, you know, make that jump. So that's kind of what I hope happens anyway. <clears throat> My daughter's 16 and uh, very, very high academic like her mom, not, not like me. <laughs> yeah, she did some softball when she was younger and it just wasn't her cup of tea. She's a heck of a piano player, which, you know, I have zero musical talent. <laughs>